Voting rights is maybe the most consequential thing. I think what I'm going to be going around the country, spending time making the case to the American people that this just isn't about showing an identification that this is who I am when I vote. This isn't just about whether or not, excuse me, you can provide water for someone standing in line while they're waiting to vote. This is about who gets to judge whether your vote counted after it's been cast. Who in God's name, as my mother would say, died and left them boss? Your vote has to count when you cast it. President Biden today promising action on what he describes as the most consequential fight of his presidency, the battle over voting rights in America. Those comments coming after the U.S. Senate. GOP blocked the Democrats sweeping voting rights legislation, leaving Democrats and activists contemplating next steps amid the steady march of voter suppression bills in 48 states across this country. Joining our conversation, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Hi there, Jen. Hi Nothing there, much going on there. Nothing that happening here. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh, we'll nope. get to infrastructure. We'll get to COVID. I know the president's on the road, but I, I want to ask you about those those comments. I interview folks on the front line of trying to protect not just voting rights, but the, avoid voter nullification, which mm -hmm. a lot of people feel is the most ominous and haunting parts of these voter suppression bills. I'm sure you know the numbers, 389 of them speeding through 48 legislatures, 22 of yeah. them already signed into law. You could argue that President Biden might not have won states like Georgia if that law had been in place then, if you look at the numbers and the restrictions. I want to know if he sides with people like Beto O'Rourke and Michigan Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, who say it is long overdue to reform the filibuster when it comes to voting rights legislation. Well, first I'd say, Nicole, the, you're going to hear a lot more from the president next week on voting rights. He's going to deliver some remarks to the American people and talk a lot more about what he wants to do. He alluded today to talking about it around the country. He also wants to use every lever at his disposal. He's also a believer that providing educational resources, providing resources to make sure people understand their rights is a part of it, and also making sure we fight alongside these legislators and alongside these activists to make sure that voting rights and access to voting is something people have access to across the country. We certainly know there's been, which is why you asked me, of course, that there's been a lot of talk and conversation about the filibuster. Look, the president's position on that hasn't changed, but he believes also that there's a way, there should be a way for Democrats and Republicans across the country to work together to make voting more accessible to people. It's a basic right. But I, I guess the, the, it's already out there. I mean, there is no bipartisan. I mean, do you really think there are Republican votes? Federal leg, working alongside folks in the states would not be necessary if there was federal legislation. So has he abandoned federal legislation? No, he certainly has not. And this legislation just failed to move forward just two days ago. Uh, and the president's going to work with Leader Schumer, Speaker Pelosi, others on what we can do next on a federal level. Uh, there's also the uh, there's also additional voting rights, additional uh, pieces of legislation to make sure we're protecting uh, voting rights across the country. That's something he's going to continue to advocate for. It's not easy. We, we're not suggesting that. All I'm conveying is that there's also work that needs to be done out in states with activists, empowering, engaging and standing by their sides. And he's going to do that. He is very popular, not just in the Democratic Party, but I know as he and, and you all uh, point out with Republicans in the country who supported the COVID relief package overwhelmingly, whose support likely contributed to Republicans coming to the table on infrastructure. Um, would he play a similar role in bringing Republicans to the White House to work on a bipartisan compromise on voting rights? If there was a path forward, absolutely he would. You know, he's a believer that we got to find ways where we can work together and find common ground. Uh, today was evidence of that. We'll see if voting rights is evidence of that. I know you've talked a lot about this on your show. It is insane. And, and American people think it's insane, and they should, that we're not making it easier for people to vote. What are people so afraid of? And so, yes, of course, he'd be open to that and open to engaging and playing a role in bringing Democrats and Republicans together. The question now is really for the Republicans. Why, what are they afraid of? Why won't they have a conversation about where we can find agreement on making it easier and more 
accessible. And, you know, we expect, I know you asked me about the filibuster earlier, that's really a question for Democrats in Congress, members of the Senate, to see if there's 50 votes to move forward on changes. I don't think those exist right now. I don't think anyone ex thinks those exist right now. Does the failure this week of this legislation to move forward change the conversation? It may. We'll see.